And now, ladies and gentlemen, to all the millions and millions of boxing fans watching around the world, welcome to the Tokyo Dome, the Big A, right here in one of the greatest cities in the world, Tokyo, Japan. I would like to introduce in, this, in the ring at this time a man known as one of the premier promoters in the world of boxing, Mr. Don King. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble 12 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing his boxing trunks and weighing 238 and one quarter pounds with a professional record of 24 victories, 15 by knockout, and only one defeat from Cincinnati, Ohio. He is the second ranked heavyweight in the world and a former heavyweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Tony TNT. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks and weighing 216 and one quarter pounds from Catskill, New York, which is the hometown of the late great trainer of champions, Customato. He brings a professional record of 33 victories without a loss, 29 KOs, including 25 KOs in five rounds or less and 15 in the first round alone. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undisputed the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson! Mike and Tony, you both received instructions earlier in the day, and therefore you know the rules. I wish you both an awful lot of luck now. Return to your corners to await the starting bell. Good luck. That's Arthur McCanty doing his sixth heavyweight championship fight, his 78th world championship fight. Tubbs says he knows how to fight. The champion, everyone says it. It's a little bit more difficult to pull it off. Let's see if he really wants to rumble as he says he does. I see Mike Tyson iron the uh, belly, the midsection of Tony Tubb, so look for him to jump right on in the first round. Okay, all set, all set, go. Mercanti says they're all set, and there's the bell for round one. Tubbs throws the jab, and Tyson responds in time. Go, you're right, Greg. A lot of fighters find it difficult to uh, set Mike Tyson up because Mike now gives a lot of uh, head movement. All right, break. I say break, up, break. One of the big questions has been whether Tubbs would clinch and grab and simply try to survive with Tyson, as did Bone Crusher Smith and Mitch Green. For now, it does not look that way. Six, four. Well, Tubbs stated that he would just exchange punches with uh, Tyson because the best way he felt to beat him was to be inside, throw short punches, combinations. And here he selected to do that. I don't necessarily agree with that, Jim, because what happens, Tyson, with his shorter arms and upper body strength, is able to uh, do a great deal of damage to the midsection of his opponent. Watch for the left hook by Mike Tyson. Tubbs trying to go downstairs to Tyson's body. You see the left jab of Mike Tyson. He started using more consistently now. He found he found out that it gets a man into punching range. And you can begin to see the startling hand quickness that Tubbs brings. Startling partially because of the shape of his body. Well, here with Tubbs. The uppercut, I also know the uppercut of Mike Tyson. He's able to throw it, throw the same punch twice, and then over. Tyson missed with the left hook. Earlier he had landed a wicked right to the kidney. Look for a looping right hand by 
Mike Tyson because that's the punch I see that uh, Tubbs is vulnerable to. He keeps dropping that left hand. One minute to go in round one. Tubbs landed a left and ducked away effectively. You know what you do, Sam. What Tubbs needs to be doing now, he needs to throw two and three jabs to kind of break the rhythm of Mike. Because what's happening, Tyson's starting to set up. You need to break that rhythm with a jab. Tubbs throwing the uppercut. A lot of people think he will have to be effective with that punch because Tyson comes in constantly. Well, Tyson also lunged him with an overhand right there. And that's one of the mistakes he makes. Ten seconds to go in round one. after the bell and now Mike Tyson returns to his corner. I thought Tubbs fought a very effective round. I gave him the round. He landed some hooks and he went to the body as promised. Remember he told us that nobody has gone to Mike Tyson's body so far. Voice is that of trainer yeah. Kevin Rudy. Here, Mike. Yeah. Here, Mike. Oh, you got it. Six and one at the middle. Yeah, take that. Don't you move. You can't make a move for you. You can make it. I'm cutting for that body by doing that foot. You hit him with the right hand to the chin. Hey, there you go. Hey. Okay. Sit on that. Sit on that. Okay, good. Sit on that. Loud two. Out, out. The talking in Tubbs' corner was done by trainer Odell Hadley. So now Hadley and Rooney have had their minute, and round two begins. Tubbs keeping that right hand up because of the left hook of Mike Tyson. But also, you notice now you see a much more relaxed Tony Tubbs. So now his punches are being more fluent. Look at Tyson with the rapid-fire three jabs in a row. Something new within the past year. Well, Tyson is starting to improve each time he steps into the ring. But what I see here at Tubbs, Tubbs is pretty much trying to get range so he can drop his right hand because in this corner they told him to drop the right hand the left hook lands but he needs to come back with the right hand there's the right hand Jim I spoke earlier about you must give Tyson angles you can't remain stationary hands must stay up and stay out of the corners. But indeed, Tony acknowledged in talking with us, Ray, that you couldn't finesse Tyson completely. You have to be willing, as he said, to fight him. Well, you saw that, that double punch with one hand, sort of a bolo type punch. And those are the type of punches that do a great deal of damage because the body shot, then the uppercut, raises the chin up, and then the left hook comes into play. Good uppercut by Tubbs inside. Snap Tyson back a little. Tubbs has to be very careful. You notice he put both feet together, and that's easy to be knocked down or knocked off balance. He's trying to use his additional weight. Coming up on a minute to go in round two. Tony Tubbs so far appears in no way intimidated by Tyson's fury, as have so many of his opponents. Good left hook. Good, good combination by Tubbs. Open up. You know, Tubbs just trying to gain respect, and I think he's done that. Good left by Tyson. That's real. Those hands must be kept up higher. And again, like I stated earlier, Jim, I don't think it's a good idea to change punches with Tyson. Good body shot, but you need combinations there. 30 seconds left in the round. Both fighters have had their say here. I couldn't tell whether another punch hurt. Tubbs is hurt. Tubbs is hurt badly. It was a left hook. And it's over. Odell Hadley has jumped in the ring. 
The fight is over. With stunning swiftness. And the fans are enjoying. They show their appreciation here. Remarkable. The tide of this fight changed within 15 or 20 seconds. Well, that's that's what a great puncher can do. The boxer is thinking all the time, and the puncher is punching all the time. Um, the only thing I can say now is that if you thought that uh, whale hunting was outlawed in Japan, we just saw that uh, Mike Tyson hadn't heard about it. And Ray Leonard, let's take a look back at the left hands which did the damage. Well, Tyson now starting to find his range. That left hook there pretty much did spoke for itself. It's self-explanatory because it was a short and powerful left hook that put Tony Tubbs down. And here Mike still showing that he is a good finisher. Tubbs had already been reeling a bit before that point as the result of a short right against the ropes. What was happening actually was that Tyson was wearing down Tubbs because Tubbs tried to stay inside and fight Mike Tyson fight, which I thought was a mistake. Once again, that's short left hook. And uh, for those who say Mike is not really one punch knocker outer, I think they need to look at some films again. Mike has enormous strength and great upper body uh, power. Early now in round two. That was the punch against the ropes that really started things off. I said a right, it was in fact a left right on the forehead. But if you can appreciate the power of Mike Tyson because that punch hit him on the temple and it wasn't really a six inch punch, it was shorter than that. So Tony Tubbs becomes the latest in the string of victims. Tyson's 30th knockout in 34 times in the ring. Bad, Mr. Hattie. And the Japanese, who were so disappointed 15 years ago by George Foreman's one-round knockout of Joe Roman, got about two and a half minutes more this time. But Jimmy also has to cool, uh, commend the corner of Tony Tubbs because they was in there for the welfare of his safety because they saw the power of Mike Tyson. They saw that the man was hurt and was indeed down. Interestingly, Ray, one of the things that Tubbs had seemed to demonstrate throughout his 26 fight career up to that point was a pretty good chin. Well, he has a very good durable chin, but again, that's Mike Tyson there. And right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official statistics on this one. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official time. Two minutes, 54 seconds of the second round. The winner by knockout victory. Now 34 consecutive victories. Still the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Well, Ray Leonard, uh, Tony Tubbs himself, as it turns out, said it best in a press conference a few days ago when, in sarcasm, he said to the audience, I'm the tune-up, the big fight is in June. As it turns out, he was exactly right. He was the tune-up, the big fight is in June. What did Michael Spinks see today that he will have to worry about on June 27th? Well, I'm sure that Michael Spinks saw the power of Mike Tyson and that Mike Tyson is indeed getting better and better, more patient and more destructive in the sense. And right now, that young man is with Larry Merchant, so let's go straight up to the ring. All right, Mike Tyson, it seemed that Tony Tubbs went right at you and tested you, and you were a little bit too strong for him, but he was effective until you hurt him. Well, he was effective because I planned it that way. I was looking for the opening, because I planned for him to run, and then when I saw he became such an easy target to hit, I was just planning and planning. And he had his hands up very high, I was surprised that he had his hands up so high. And so I started hitting to the body and bringing it up in the middle. And then as soon as he brought his hands, I saw his eyes and I aimed right for his eyes. He said that nobody had ever gone to your body before and he wanted to try you there. He did hit, hit you a few blows there. Did he hurt you at all? Not Distract at all. you even? Not at all. 
my, my mission is to go and destroy and not to let anything get involved. If you get punched, you get hurt. I refuse to be hurt, knocked down, and knocked out. I can't lose. I refuse to lose. What was your response to the audience here, which is kind of quiet compared to the crowds in America? Did you I, hear anything or not, not at all? Anything? Not at all. I knew there were people scratching me when I was coming through, but I had such an intense tunnel vision. I just my, my objective was just to get in there and get my hands on my opponent. Okay. When he didn't come out moving and jabbing and doing those kind of things, what was your first thought about well, that? Well, I said, well, this is going to be a complicated fight. It's going to be a fight. He came to fight. And, you know, and I was, I, for the last moment, I prepared for him to just come out swinging because Kevin said he's going to come out and try to rough you. Did he at all try to rough you up? Absolutely. I, I, felt, I felt the tip of his um, glove around my eye. I don't know if it was the thumb, but in fighting, you're in a hurt business. You can't complain. And he was there to complain. Is it just a question, do you feel, that no matter what anybody's plan is, that your power will negate any plan? Our plan is better. <laughs> Our plan is, we just, the objective is to win. We don't fight by book techno technology or anything. We come to fight the authentic way. When you see a man come out and he's obviously that out of shape and heavy, does that lull you in any way in the first round? Not at all, not at all. That was his prerogative to come out the way he did. My job is to finish him off. You see, someone if he would have went 10 rounds, 6 rounds, 7 rounds, then someone could say something critical towards my performance. But he came out, he came in, he, was a, he came out a tough performance. He didn't come like a guy that just came to pick up a payday. He got hit with a solid shot. It looked like it was above the eye, but I tried to hit him exactly in the eye. And he took a, a great shot and he went down. But if he, if he would have last 6 or 7 rounds and he was out of shape, then you could criticize me. But he came to fight. And if anybody could criticize that he was out of shape, I did what's supposed to have been done to a person that was out of shape. I got rid of him quick. This is your first fight as a newlywed. Were you thinking about that at all? Did you want to put on a special performance in any way? Not at all, because when I'm in the ring, I'm objective, tunnel vision, and it's just this is my world in here. I have to ask you one last question, Mike, in an article in Sports Illustrated that's on the stands now back in the States. It was said that sometimes after a fight, because you have so much adulation now and everybody's around you, you feel you have to go back, put a mask on, beg for quarters, go no. back to your old neighborhood. No. Is that true? No, I don't do that. I said me and my friend did it one, do it once and all for a joke because he makes a joke. You know, you always say, people always say, Mike Tyson, you have a lot of money, you do this and that. So when they made my friend Robbie go, we put on mags and baggy clothes and bunny clothes and we went on the street begging for money. Just as a personal joke for myself. So we won't have to throw any charity for you. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike Tyson. And now back to ringside with Jim. All right, Larry, thank you very much. And one brief personal note, you saw behind Mike's shoulder there his co-manager, Bill Caton. For the first time since Mike's been fighting as a professional, the other co-manager, Jim Jacobs, has not been able to make this trip. He's back in a hospital room in New York recovering from an illness, and we would all like to offer our personal best wishes to Jim and wish him a speedy recovery and look forward to seeing him in Atlantic City on June 27. Ray? We heard the essence of Mike Tyson's ring intelligence there. This is a fight. You make no excuses. You come to destroy your opponent. Right now, we'll look back at round two, and you tell us exactly how he did it. Well, there's no question about it, Jim, that Mike Tyson is always on a mission when he's in the ring. And I think it's tough, difficult, rather, for fighters to deal with him because he doesn't have a feeling out process. In other words, he doesn't see whether or not he can land a jab or right hand. He goes right at you, and he goes in there for the kill. And we're going to take a look back now at the entire second round, Ray, from the handheld camera angle, which will give you a feel of what it looked like to us from ringside. Remember that Larry Merchant himself commented that he thought Tubbs fought a very effective first round and, in fact, scored the first round for Tubbs. I thought it was pretty close to even, but certainly I thought Tubbs had given an impressive account of himself in round one. The first round, that's the way you fight Mike Tyson or compete with Mike Tyson, brother, because you have to give him angles, jab. You see the jab, how effective it is, movement, never stationary target, because what happens here, when he becomes stationary, Mike Tyson works your body, he brings your hands down, and then he goes for the kill. I thought the first round was a pretty good round for Tubbs, although I would have preferred to see a lot more movement, a lot more left jabs thrown. Do you think that fatigue was becoming a factor this early in the fight for Tony? That's rather premature to say because uh, normally body shots wear you down the later rounds. But then they're always an exception to the rule because Mike Tyson's body attack is so devastating. Here he's going right to the midsection, 
and uh, I'm sure Tubbs felt those shots. Tubbs, again, made the mistake of trying to exchange punch for punch with Mike Tyson, and in doing so, he took away what got him to, to the championship. That's the jab, the movement, and his boxing style. There you saw Tubbs doing as he claimed he would try to do, delivering body shots to Tyson. But what you have to understand, Jim, inside, Mike Tyson has the greater upper body strength, and um, he has the shorter punches. He throws more combinations inside, and they're short because his hands are very fast, too, for a heavyweight. There was a good short left inside by Tubbs. But you also see the power of Mike Tyson because always after Tubbs delivers his combination, Tyson retaliates. And indeed, that's the problem of bringing the strategy that Tony said he would bring. You've got to fight with Mike Tyson, but then you give him a chance to do his thing. Look at the short shots that Mike hits his opponents with. Good short left hooks to the head, right hooks to the head, and then he delivers that, that crunch and body shots. Not a lot of movement from Tubbs, although Tubbs now is trying to get some respect from Mike Tyson. I love that combination there with the same punch, same hand. The right to the body and an uppercut, right uppercut. Here, I see that uh, Tubbs is wobbly. He's ready to go here. So he, Tubbs winds up as a, um, a bug, a fat bug on the windshield of Mike Tyson's career. And indeed, Larry, uh, as time goes on, we are likely to have opportunity after opportunity to continue to place Tyson in historical perspective and into proper perspective in the modern boxing scene. Your thoughts on what you saw him do with Tony Tubbs today? Well, I think it just uh, basically it confirms the fact that uh, while he may not yet be classified as a great heavyweight champion, that he's certainly the most precocious young heavyweight that there ever was in boxing. He's still younger than any other person has ever become the heavyweight champion, and yet he's not yet uh, 22 years old. Um, I imagine he's going to be awfully good for the uh, balance of payments in America as he, uh, <coughs> excuse me, travels around the world because people around the world uh, do want to see this American phenomenon. And, of course, all of that, Larry, presumes that he can get by Michael Spinks on June 27. Did you see anything here which alters your perspective on the Spinks bout? Well, well the only thing I've seen here that uh, would affect the Spinks fight would be that Michael Spinks knows, if he have ever had any idea of staying inside with this guy, that he's got to just stay away from him and hope to uh, uh, frustrate him and make him a little wild and crazy and tentative. Uh, and then jump in as uh, he has wont to do. I have great respect for Michael Spinks as a fighter, but against somebody who is as young and strong and especially as fast with his hands, with his feet, and even with his mind. He adjusts with his mind. Not many 21-year-old fighters can do that. Um, I don't see any, any hope for uh, Michael Spinks or anybody else out there that we know of at, uh, at this point. That's a pretty strong statement. Uh, Larry has just said that he sees no hope for Michael Spinks, who is an undefeated fighter uh, who once held a legitimate heavyweight championship of the world in the eyes of one of the three governing bodies, who is still seen by some as a people's champion because he twice defeated Larry Holmes. Uh, where do you stand on the Spinks versus Tyson question at this moment, Ray? Well, I think that Michael Spinks will have to be innovative in order to defeat Mike Tyson. Naturally, watching his performance tonight uh, reassures him that it's not a good idea to stand inside with Mike Tyson. Michael Spinks, his style is so unorthodox, and his movement will pretty much help him out a great deal because if he selects to stay inside, Jim, he's asked for problems because Michael Spinks is indeed a very intelligent boxer. All right, just to sum up, and uh, with thanks to Ray and Larry, what you have seen today was 21 and a half year old heavyweight champion Mike Tyson earning about nine or ten million dollars for just under six minutes worth of work in the ring. The product of the continuing development process, which was begun by a great fight trainer named Customato, which continues now under Kevin Rooney, under the management of two men named Bill Caton and Jim Jacobs. And the prospect continues to exist that we will watch this heavyweight champion fight all around the world against all kinds of opponents. Stay tuned. Immediately following this World Championship Boxing telecast, 
for a special presentation of the Hitchhiker, special ingredient, followed by a nightmare...